Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar this month for the National Native HIV Network. We have Monique Castro joining us this afternoon um, to present on caring for yourself as caring for your community. So we thank you all for joining us. If you um, could please introduce yourself in the chat with your name, organization, and also your tribal affiliation. Um, we would love to meet you all and um, hope you all can interact as well during this time. This webinar is being recorded and will be uh, posted on our National Native HIV Network YouTube page. And you can come back and reference it when you need a reminder about self-care strategies and its important in our, importance in our lives. Again, this webinar is hosted by the National Native HIV Network. The National Native HIV Network was formed in 2017 as a community-led response to increase and organize a national voice and presence in the HIV movement from the American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian communities. With support from the Indian Health Service and the Health and Human Services Office of Secretaries Minority HIV AIDS Fund, the Albuquerque Area Indian Health Board coordinates a wide array of key stakeholders from the 12 IHS areas to form the National Native HIV Network. The network provides input and guidance to assist IHS and other agencies in efforts to reach high-risk American Indian and Alaska Native populations with HIV testing, prevention, and treatment. We build group capacity and provide assistance to support extensive community engagement strategies, dissemination of information at regional and national level, and also supports professional and leadership development to sustain these efforts. Each region in the National Native HIV Network has at least two members, and we hope some of them are joining us today. For more information on the National Native HIV Network, please visit our website. The link will be posted in the chat. And again, we thank you for joining us this afternoon for our monthly webinar series. Next month, we are planning a webinar on trauma-informed case management. So please keep an eye out for additional updates. You may also join our newsletter where we post registration information up on the website if you go to the membership tab on our website. So again, we thank you for joining us today. Um, I will pass it over to Kurt once I provide my own introduction. My name is Savannah Jean. Kutsani Nishlo Hishkanza Bashishin. Katnasani Dashiche Dog is a Thana Dashanala. I say in Nadanti Let Dan Asha. Thank you again. My name is Savannah Jean. I am the program director for the Community Health Education and Resiliency Program at the Albuquerque Area Indian Health Board. I am also an administrator for the National Native HIV Network. I'm originally from Burkhorn, Arizona, but have lived and worked in the Albuquerque area for the past. 18 years, and so I am so happy that you could join us today. And I'll pass it over to my colleague and clan dad, Kurt. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Savannah. Um, good, good morning or good afternoon. Good morning, especially to our relatives in Hawaii. Um, my name is Kurt Begay. I am Navajo, originally from Chinle, Arizona. Currently reside in Albuquerque, and I am the capacity building specialist at the Albuquerque Area Indian Health Board, and also co-coordinator of the National Native HIV Network. And so, it is my great pleasure to welcome our presenter today, Ms. Monique Castro, who is a citizen of the Diné Nation, Navajo Nation, um, like Savannah and I, and also Mexican, born and raised on the ancestral lands of the Tongva people, also known as Los Angeles. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist, certified professional coach, social justice consultant, facilitator, and advocate with over 14 years of professional experience in the areas of health, wellness, community organizing, and education. Her approach centers on indigenous worldview and core values. She is a collaborative and re relational leader with an exceptional track record, building and maintaining sustainable relationships with native-led organizations, tribes, higher education institutions, and community members throughout California and nationally. Her leadership includes establishing the California Native Vote Project as a co-founder, co-founder of the So'o Chanela Sister Project, 
an Indigenous Circle of Wellness founder and CEO, a thriving psychotherapy private practice located in Southeast Los Angeles. Monique earned her Bachelor's of Arts degree in psychology from California State University of Los Angeles and a Master's of Science degree in counseling psychology from Mount St. Mary's University and is clinically trained in relational gestalt therapy, EMDR, and other holistic approaches to wellness. So with that, I will turn it over to our presenter, Ms. Monique Castro. Thank you so much for having me. Um, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, so thanks for that introduction uh, and sharing a little bit about me. Um, yeah, so I grew up here in Los Angeles. My family is from in, around, in and around the Window Rock area, the Navajo Nation, and came to Los Angeles during the relocation era, so back in the 1950s. And um, grandma was definitely a, one of the, the grandmas that, um, well now grandma, um, but back then young, youngster that uh, traveled to Los Angeles and has grown a family here. Um, so I was raised by my grandparents, my uh, paternal grandmother and paternal grandfather, my Mexican grandfather and Navajo grandmother. So a lot of the things um, and the work that I do is very much um, grounded in their teachings, their, their knowledge and, um, and the values that they instilled in me as, um, as their granddaughter and in our family. So I definitely always bring them with me. Grandma is now in the spirit world. So my grandfather is still physically here with us. And so spend a lot of time with him as much as I can. And um, I'm now a new mama to a fur baby. I have a beautiful little doggy that might be walking around here later on. Um, and as we talk about self-care, he has been a huge part of my self-care and support um, system. So if you see him and if he makes his appearance, uh, his name is Teddy. So thank you all again for having me. Um, you know, I just wanna first acknowledge that we have been in some really challenging times and that if you're feeling overwhelmed, um, like you're not as productive as you used to be, if you're feeling like a little bit more sluggish, um, tired, exhausted, sleeping patterns are off, um, whatever that might be, what might be showing up for you, it's expected. And it's totally normal that you might feel that you be that you are feeling that. Um, it's burnout, really. It's burnout. We're really tired. We're exhausted. We've been doing a lot. And in many of the work that we all are doing, whether that's within our families and the organizations that we're a part of, and you know, personally in community, we are being stretched very thin um, and showing up in so many ways. So. I just want us to first kind of just start off by arriving here today, acknowledging that we're probably coming with a lot of like tension in our back, you know, stress in our bellies, um, maybe tightness that we're feeling in our legs, wherever that might be. Um, and I just want to invite everyone first to just take a big deep inhale through their nose. Holding it at the top, slow exhale. We're gonna take another deep inhale. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes. And a slow release. I want you to now pay attention to just what your body might be signaling to you, whether that's tension that you're holding, if it's thoughts, if it's an agenda that you're, you need to get to a to-do list. We're gonna just kind of let that go for this moment as we're together. And we're gonna just take another deep inhale. And on the exhale, just releasing that. And we're gonna take one more deep inhale. And slow exhale, releasing anything else that might still be lingering around our our energy spaces at this time. And arrive back when you're ready. So I know even in preparing for um, our time together, I was thinking about, well, we all know, because we hear it all the time, gotta take care of ourselves. Self-care is important. And it is, it's so important. And then also to like, but what does that mean for me? What does that mean for you individually? And how does that, support our entire 
collective, right? Our family, our friends, community, um, clients or um, coworkers and colleagues, because when we're not well, if we're having a bad day, it rubs off on others, right? Just like we notice when someone in our family or a colleague is not having a good day, we kind of just, we can feel it even if they don't say something, right? So we know it has this kind of ripple effect in the same ways that when we're feeling our best, it also has this really positive ripple effect and we can share a lot of good energy and space. But if, um, if you all are feeling like I've been feeling, <laughs> which is, as I mentioned, burned out, exhausted, tired, some days feel better than the other, um, it, it's a reminder that we do need to kind of come back to ourselves and check in, what can we do to support? What, what are the things that are missing? What are the things on our plates that need to be removed? <laughs> um, a lot of the times it's not adding on new things, it's actually just taking off things that might not be serving us right now. I also wanna mention something that um, was shared to me by my personal therapist, because I remember talking to her months ago about burnout, I'm like, I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. I feel like there's so much work to do. The world needs us more than ever. And all that is true. And she did share with me this, she said, well, when you're feeling burned out, when you're feeling to that point where you're not excited anymore about something, when it's hard to get out of bed, when it's you're, the motivation and the interest isn't there, when you're not as productive, now you're forgetting things, whatever that, whatever that might look like for you, your burnout had already started months before that started happening. You're at the point where you're like at the tail end of it, but burnout has already um, began months before that. So my burnout starts all the way back to last year in March. <laughs> I remember off the first two weeks, I was already like, this is, I, it's a lot. As a therapist during this time, it's been a lot. Um, and I know so many of us are holding many different hats and, and offering support in so many ways. So again, I just want to acknowledge that this is um, not for us to necessarily be more productive, right? Not like a, a list of things like, well, now we got to keep on going. No, it's more of like, how are we taking care of ourselves for the long run and for our sustainability, for our health and our full wellness. So I'm going to share a few slides with you all, but I want to invite you first, if you don't already have something with you um, to write with, um, grab a pencil, a pen, a crayon, anything you got, a color pencil. If you're really techie and you have like the iPad with the the pen thing you know you get that too just something to write something on it can be on a post-it it can be on a, a a back of a of a paper you've already been working on today just something to write some write some stuff down i'm going to share my screen for a second okay i have two screens and i'm trying to figure out how to get to the second one okay here we go. So um, as I mentioned, caring, you know, this workshop is caring for yourself, is caring for your community. So just a reminder that when we're well, others around us are well. So I think of this as like planting seeds and growing a garden. We have to tend to that garden. And there's also other people who are part of that garden or in this case, in the photo, you know, different animals that contribute to the cross pollination of that garden, and the, we also have to tend to it. Um, and I share this because it does take work and a constant like reminder and a revisiting. So it's never one one solution or one thing. In different seasons, we might have to tend to this garden differently, right? And thinking of ourselves as that garden that we're tending to. So the way we might show up or need to show up for ourselves and or ask for support during the fall or a certain part of the year might look different throughout the year as well. So just kind of also keeping that in mind. Now, part of self-care when we think of self-care and, and caring for our community is that we're also, when we're taking care of ourselves, we are modeling for others on how to take care of themselves. By that in itself, it's, it's supportive to others, right? how we are setting boundaries, how we're communicating our needs, asking for help, giving support, all these things our little ones are noticing, our relatives are noticing, even the elders who might be very much set in their ways are noticing <laughs> these different things that we're doing that are, are um, contributing more to our wellness. 
So just the act of doing something different in itself is supportive. So I want us all to use that pencil, pen, crayon um, to draw on your paper. And we're gonna pretty much draw this like kind of like web diagram. So in the middle, um, make a circle, draw a little picture of yourself or you can put your name on there. Um, and I want you to list as many things that come to mind what is that comes to mind that is not working for you, that is not serving you right now, that might be taking up too much of your space, energy, and time, doesn't make you happy, that might be stressing you out, not enjoyable, but kind of the things that are just not really working. So if you were to write these down, I'm give everyone two minutes. You can also create it as a list, but I like to do things in circles. Just allow yourself to write it down. Maybe it's um, it's not working that, you know, I'll give you some examples for me. Um, I get called on a lot for a lot of support from my family members. So answering everyone's call is not working for me right now. <laughs> All the needs, so I would write that down. I work too many hours a week. I need to stop working so much. Try to put some boundaries on my time. So again, just anything for you that's not working at this time. Or that you're like, yeah, I really like to change that. Okay, have another 30 seconds or so to fill that in, what is not working for you, or serving you, taking up too much space, not enjoyable. Okay. So now that you have this listed, and you might even think about maybe in the upcoming part of the workshop or even after we log off, maybe later on, you're like, you know what, what else is not working for me? And then make sure you add it on that list. <laughs> and the reason why I'm asking you all to do this is because there's many times that we are trying to figure out what is the next thing to add on to make things feel less or feel better, feel more enjoyable. Um, that maybe what we think is self-care, but sometimes it's going just that what is currently going on that's not working and how do I start one, setting boundaries, having um, some parameters here or checking in with yourself. How can I do either less of this or take this off my plate? These are like weeds in my garden that are just like, you know, not, helping out here, how do I move these out? Then to add more stuff, right? So what can we remove? What is not serving you? And you might see something already on your list, on your you know circle here. You're like, yeah, if I can take that out, that takes up so much space, it's not enjoyable. That in itself would create so much more space and opportunity for ways in which I can take care of myself in other ways. Okay, so just use this as a way to think about what is not working for you. And then we're going to we're going to see what we can replace that with. <laughs> um, or maybe it's just time that you need, right? This downtime. So I shared with you all um, jokingly, but I was serious, is that I work too much. I created a, a non, no, sorry, I cre did create a nonprofit too, but I created a private practice to be a therapist where I can have more autonomy and flexibility in my schedule. And guess what I did this last year? <laughs> I created a schedule that was back to the nine to five that I used to have. And who did that? Me, right? So I also take responsibility. It's like, oh, I recreated the very thing that I was like trying to not do anymore. 
sure part of it was to meet the needs and um, show up but the other now I'm looking at it it's not working for any for me anymore how do I readjust this so for me what I now do I have Fridays off completely I go visit with grandpa because that's part of my self-care is being in space with him um I also have a, a limit on I don't do any appointments or anything after four o'clock um I have an hour and a half lunch breaks because I like to enjoy my food and also take a nap. Um, so I am like, what do I need? What do I know I need? I do a lot of my work that I, I have a lot of energy in the morning time. So in the morning time, I, I do a lot of those things that I don't usually have the energy to do at the evening. So I re restructure things, right? And I don't work on weekends anymore either. Even when I get pulled to want to do it, I don't do it. So these are boundaries I set for myself. Um, and I've also communicated with my family things that like, hey, I know we're all having a hard time. I can't fix everyone's problems. So um, if it has to do with X, Y, and Z, I love you. I can support you in these ways. And these are also my limitations. They don't always like it, but it's helpful for me. And then they find other solutions. <laughs> um, the other thing is um, just overall time, right? Like if like knowing what my capacity is, if something is feels like too much or I need to like adjust it, like having a counter offer to that as well. Um, so it doesn't always have to be a no when you want to like set boundaries. It can be like, well, how about it looks like this? Or how about um, this is another option? Does that work for you, right? So just kind of like having, it, it has a lot to do with just communicating. So the next thing I want us to, um, to do is another circle. You in the middle again. And um, now you're gonna just note down what brings you joy, balance, grounding, happiness, excitement. What are those things? Whether or not you're including them right now. So write those down. Is it dancing? Is it music? Is it prayer? Maybe it's all these different things for you. We'll take a few, a few minutes here to input. What brings you joy, balance, grounding? Okay, and you'll probably notice that one, these things that bring you joy, grounding and balance, if you're not feeling balanced right now, probably have, you probably look at the list like, yeah, I haven't done any of these things in a while. Like, I missed that. I wanna go back to that. I need to bring that back in. So it's not that we don't know what they are, like what supports us. It's that because there might be so much taking up space, <laughs> that we haven't had the opportunity to include the things that we enjoy. I know just uh, the other day I was talking to um, one of my cousins and I was like, I just miss being spontaneous. Like, I just wanna like, like just, I wanna go there, let's, let's just go. Cause that is just exciting. Like it brings up, you know, that adrenaline and like fun. Like, we'll just kind of figure it out when we get there. And like, I feel like everything's so scheduled right now. It's, Kind of like too rigid and boring <laughs> so she's like you know she's like I want you to do something spontaneous so I'm still thinking about oops, excuse me I'm still thinking about what that is for me like what is this spont this spontaneous is it me just getting in my car and driving somewhere and you know is it um booking something that I, I've been wanting to do in a long time I'm not sure um but I need I need to, I need to do something spontaneous I even have a post-it that says to be spontaneous so whatever that might be for you, I, I just really want you to keep this close as a reminder of something that you, this is part of your wellness. This is part of your self-care. How is this gonna be included? Where can you include this, right? For some of us, it might be first clearing off what is not working for us or attending to that. So we are spaciousness for this. 
like I want to start a, I want to um, start going to a, I want to be wanted to do like a dance class. So one, uh, there's steps to that. I got to figure out a dance class. Where is it at? Um, and then if it's like midday during the day, like figuring out my schedule so I can make that dance class. Um, but whatever that might be for you, you might have to first do some letting go of some stuff so that there's spaciousness. If there's already spaciousness, then it's just kind of like plugging that in. Where is that? Where is that going to be at? So these two little diagrams that you all created, when, um, when folks often ask me about like, how do you journal, right? I'm, I can be the kind of person that journals where like, I just write all my thoughts, which is very helpful, write all my thoughts. Sometimes my journal is this, I just recheck in with myself, like what is stressing me out right now? I list it all out and like, oh yeah, too much stuff is stressing me out. I gotta like reduce the stress. How do I let go of this stress? How do I change this? And then what do I need to bring back? What is missing? So these are like really, I would hope um, doable things for you all to think about versus me telling you like, go get a massage, go get, you know, um, a, a go, go book a trip somewhere, which don't get me wrong, those can and will, are also very much self-care, but that might not be for everyone, right? Sometimes it's just making the time in the morning to sit outside with your coffee and enjoy the sun rising. Like when was the last time you did that, right? Um, so these little things, so what is joy for me and brings balance is not gonna be the same for you all. So you need to know first about what that is for you. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, as I, well, I did mention about boundaries is, is ch always checking in with yourself. So if someone's asking you for something, suggesting something, um, or you even want to like do something is one, do I have the capacity for it? Is it something I can honestly do realistically? Is it right now? Maybe it's later, maybe not at all. Maybe it's just a great idea and I'll just keep that on my notebook for the future. And then the other is, um, have you slept on it? What I've been hearing a lot of folks share with me, both in my, my therapy work and coaching work and just in community in general, is this need to say yes so quickly. Then, then after we say yes, we're like, why did I say that? I should have waited. I wasn't sure. How do I get out of it now? Oh, but I can't because I already said yes, I got to follow through. So. I invite you all to do this and see if it's helpful is say, I'm not sure yet. Let me get back to you tomorrow. Sleep on it. <laughs> Sleep on it and see if it's still something you do or don't want to do. You might know automatically you don't want to do something or you might automatically want to say yes. Still take the time. I think we're so quick to always um, go quick to answer something than to just pause and give yourself that time to check in and, and actually look at, at your availability and capacity <laughs> before we say yes. I have, I've been having to say no to a lot of things, which is, it's hard and also um, a muscle that I'm building and I'm really happy because it's it has created more um, spaciousness for me to do the things that I enjoy. So um, I'm gonna just pause there and I know we have some questions um, from our moderators here, and, but I also invite folks to share anything in the chat as well, either questions or things that are working for you because that's the other thing about community and self-care is that if we share ideas with one another, we're like, oh, I haven't tried that. I gotta do that, right? Um, so yeah, I'll just pause there and and check in with our, our moderators. Thank you so much for that, Monique. That was a really useful activity there. And just during that time, realize my own self-care and boundaries that I need to put up. <laughs> so um, yeah, we have some questions and yes, please feel free to share some ideas um, of how you practice self-care and find things that bring you joy share that in the chat and also put questions in the chat as well, or 
in the Q&A section, you can use that so we can make sure we keep those questions in place. Um, but we have a few questions that we wanted to have a discussion about. Um, Monique, can you share with us how we can educate our communities and providers about experiences with feelings of anxiety and sadness during their course of their work? Yeah, I, I feel like there's many ways to educate our community. And I think this is also a question of like, do you have the capacity to do this education and sharing with folks? And or when do you need to refer someone to additional support, where, whatever that might be. So I get um, a lot of questions from you know, family members about like, well, what do I do? A family and friends and so like, what do I do? One, it's like, I think it's really helpful to just normalize that we're all feeling a lot and say, yeah, it's, it's expected. We have, we've all been holding a lot, just validating each other's um, experiences. And then also if it's um, something that needs additional support, you know, there are a lot of different resources out there. And I also would say that depending on, or I encourage folks to consider what is their like wellness team, right? So who are the people that we can talk to? Um, who are like, and for some folks, this might be like friends, family, support groups, seeking a therapist, or someone in the community that they trust that can also support with wellness. Um, sometimes it's bringing in um, different types of healing modalities, it might be like our cultural ways, it can also be um, other cultures that might have other wellness practices that we can also receive support from. So for example, like I've been um, managing more of my stress with acupuncture, and it has, it had been helpful for me in the past. So I returned to that and it's been really helpful for me now. Um, it also helps with my um, headaches and stuff like that, that I, I get that are related to stress. So it's kind of like, what is your self care wellness team look like? And it, it should be more, it should always be more than one thing. It should be several things that we are tapping into. And how do we educate each other on this is to say like we what is it's even asking that question like how do you take care of yourself how are you taking care of yourself well I don't have time to take care of myself someone might say like no you got to make some time for that what is maybe one thing you can do right if it's someone is feeling um anxious right is a symptom of usually something that is um going back to that garden like deep rooted then what does that, what attention needs to be placed there, right? Anxiety, again, it's something that can, it shows up differently for everyone. Um, I have a sister. I use a lot of examples of my family, by the way. <laughs> my sister, um, who her anxiety, when she gets really anxious, she also gets really agitated. So my re um, reminder to her when she calls me upset, go take a walk, come on. While we're on the phone, go take a walk. So like let her body feel like, like loosen up like that tension that she's carrying in her body. And she's like, oh, thank you, sister, so much. That was so helpful. And that's what she just needed. But she couldn't in that moment think of like, I gotta go take a walk for myself. So sometimes it's just like seeing where folks are at, asking them like, where do you feel the tension? Where do you feel the sadness? Like, what can, what can be supportive for you? What can you reach for that might be supportive? So that's one way that we can educate is encouraging folks to seek the support, um, even if it's like, drinking a, a hot cup of tea, um, drinking some water. Have you drank water today? Well, no, I, that's right. I haven't even ate. Oh, why don't we get something to eat? <laughs> you know, I hear that a lot too. I'm like, like, oh, I feel horrible. I have a headache. I'm like, have you ate? No. <laughs> okay, we gotta eat first. You have no food in your body. Um, and so, so like always checking in on those basic needs. So I hope that answers the question because it's, I don't want to, it's definitely not one of those things where I think we have to like know all of the like mental health lingo and like do a presentation for friends and family. It's like just really checking in. So our basic needs and like are, are those being met first? And if not, how do we incorporate some other little things that can be helpful? 
Monique, you're definitely speaking to, <clears throat> you're definitely speaking our language. Um, that's one thing that Savannah and I definitely are checking in on with each other about, like, did you eat today? Have you taken your lunch break? And so we're both guilty of skipping our lunches. So, but it's good that we kind of have established that relationship where now we check in with each other and it's like, okay, reminder. So, so thank you for that. Um, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but could you expand a little bit more on like, how can we um, incorporate more of our cultural practices into our self-care strategies? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, this is different for everyone, right? I, for me, I grew up with it being a routine that with grandma in the morning, we would pray at the beginning of the day. It was a grounding. It was a connection that her and I had together. And then we, I was really young and most, I think a lot of folks would probably agree with me. They probably drank coffee for the first time with their grandmas. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was part of like our routine. And so I noticed for myself that when I don't do that in the morning because I wake up and I'm like, oh, I gotta hurry up and get ready. I gotta take a shower, I gotta do this, this. And I forget to do these like morning prayers that I know really ground me, it does make a shift in my day. And when I look back at a week that was hard, I can also look back at like, oh, I didn't even pray in the morning. I didn't do that grounding. So it makes a big difference. So I, you know, depending on what, if whether it's a, a morning, um, you know, a morning cultural practice that you bring in, maybe it's song, Maybe there's a song that your family has. Maybe it's food, a certain type of like morning food that really brings that nourishment to your body. Um, maybe it's memories. Maybe it's a story. Maybe it's a chapter in a book. Something that really starts off your day is really helpful. And I, I think we all have beautiful um, cultural practices, but life gets really busy and we sometimes put that off or we... Um, I won't say forget because we don't ever forget. We just kind of like, oh, it's already 12 o'clock, right? But even then there's, there's opportunities to reconnect. So, um, you know, being able to, to smudge, right? If you have the medicines to burn, um, to do that, to make the time for that, um, you know, and for some folks, it's not a daily practice. It might be more of like something you just like check in with yourself weekly on. Maybe it's a certain day of the week. Um, ceremony, if you're able to attend them. I know it's also really difficult right now to do that, given that we're still in COVID and there's probably restrictions. Um, but, you know, also being creative with that. But if you can just take the time to think about for you, what is a cultural practice? Whatever that might be, at least one that you can start incorporating it will be really helpful because our cultural practices are intended or created for us to be in balance. Like that, like when we think about wellness and everything, like our communities already know how to do this for like ever. <laughs> what has happened is we're in this new contemporary time and we forget about it. Or we, again, I don't say we forget, we don't forget. We oftentimes put it to the side and we have to actually put it to the forefront as one of the things that we include on a regular basis. So I'm not saying to have like your full day full of all cultural practices, you can if you're able to, but if not, at least one thing that you can do every day, whatever that might be. For some folks, it's actually dinner because food is part also of our cultural practices. Maybe it's making food together with family. And that is what you're committed to every single day. It nourishes your body. It also, there's a relationship that we're having with preparing that food. And it, give, it also is an opportunity to give to others. So again, whatever that might be for you. Thank you for that, Monique. Um, unfortunately, we do see that there's quite a bit of stigma around mental health and also seeking help for mental health. Um, how do we begin to destigmatize mental health in our communities, especially as it pertains to self-care? One is um, talking about it, being open about it, kind of going back to what I shared earlier about modeling. So, you know, I'm very open about mental health. I'm a therapist. 
practice, but also because I am open to it and I share with others, because not by the way, just because I'm a therapist doesn't mean that all therapists go to therapy. I choose to go to therapy because it's an additional supportive, um, it's helpful for my mental health. And there are also other things that I do for my mental health. And so I talk about it and I'm very uh, clear about like what I do and why I do it so that other folks can see um, and hear what might work for them. And it's not me suggesting that this is their route, but that these are options that they have. Um, so, you know, I think it's one going from ourselves to share it with others. And even when we might get the little side eye or the curiosity, um, maybe even a, a someone making a comment, it's knowing that it's important to still have these conversations. Um, and the more that we're open, others around us will continue to be. So a large part of destigmatizing is talking about it. Um, and also recognizing that we all, mental health is part of our overall wellness, just the same way our spiritual wellness, our physical wellness, emotional wellness, social wellness, all of that is as well. So if we're out of balance with any of these areas, it's gonna affect, you know, it's gonna have um, uh, an effect on the other, the other areas. So sometimes people share, um, they might indicate or share um, what they might, oh, you know, my leg got, I broke my leg or I sprained my ankle so easily, but they won't share that they needed to take half a day off of work because they were overwhelmed and stressed. So it's one of those things where it shouldn't and, sh um, and we should be better at also um, expressing it. But I know as I, have in my own family, talk about it more, I hear it more like I'm going to take a mental health day from work today, or I'm going to take um, a longer lunch because I'm feeling stressed out and I need more time. So like naming it, just the same ways we, we usually are naming very easily the physical things. Um, and, and so maybe sometimes we're not naming those physical things either. And we're just like hopping around when someone's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, you know, you have a sprained ankle there or something, but, um, I think the open the openness of communication is definitely one of them. Um, and remember, just like with anything around health and wellness, is that when we get the support that that is needed, we're able to have healing from that. Like we can heal, and we do heal, and we um, it, it sometimes and is like a part of of. Um, it's a challenge that sometimes we have to over, we're overcoming and then we heal from that, but we can't heal if no one knows and, and we're not asking or receiving the support that's needed. So, and there's so many other ways to also destigmatize, but I'm always kind of trying to get to like the very core basic areas that are like doable by all of us. You know, some of us might be like really strong mental health advocates, sharing posts on social media, doing presentations, doing all these other things. That's great and it's important but um, even more so from our most close relationships is, is gonna be more impactful or very, it is very impactful. You know, building on that question about destigmatizing mental health and just really kind of building a more positive environment, um, what are some types of professional support for mental health and what do you recommend for finding that type of support? Yeah, so um, different, different supports for mental health can be joining. Um, well, I, I'll go back to this. When we think of even like the list, right, of things that we enjoy, that brings us balance, that um, we look forward to, and that's exciting. Think about that as like, well, what do I need to do to have more of that? So I had shared earlier um, I would like to join like a dance team or some type of dance group, right? I grew up doing dance and cheer and all these different, like um, being part of a team. I kind of, I miss that as an adult. I want to get back to, I'm probably not going to do any kind of performances or anything at this age, but I would love to like be a part of a group. There's community there, right? There's music, there's a certain energy. So when we think about different ways to support our mental health is, what are those things that we need to like re-engage in? So for me, it's actually trying to find a dance studio or something around here that I can go to. We often think of like, oh, mental health, you have to have a mental health 
provider, a mental health therapist. That's not always the case. You don't have to, that's, that's an option. Um, and even as a therapist, I don't think it's for everybody. Not everyone wants to do that. Maybe it's part of their journey um, for wellness sometime, somewhere along the line. It doesn't mean they're opposed to their wellness. It just means that that might not be part of it in this moment. Or maybe it was already part of it and now they're looking at something else. That is totally fine. And um, so I would, I would say like, what are, you, what are the things when you think about like your, the areas that need to be focused on, what are the supports that are, are needed for that? Um, so an idea as mentioned, you know, what are activities that you wanna participate in? Signing up for those activities. Um, what are other wellness practices that might be, that might be helpful for you? Um, I mentioned for myself, acupuncture. Um, some folks hold a lot of tension in their body, like where it literally hurts their body. So they might need to start seeking out someone who can like do movement in their body. So like someone who does massaging, right? Or stretching, cause there's so much tension. You gotta like help get that support. There's actual professional people that stretch other people. <laughs> um, you know, we could do it ourselves too, but you know, sometimes we have someone else supporting us. It, it, it's a, a little bit more successful. Um, energy healing some folks do like reiki therapy as well to like clear our different like chakras um so it can be um very con uh, connected to your culture or it also can be other offerings that you're like this i think will work for me um so those are some offerings again i think it's just kind of check in on what you might need personally to um that would really support like that that wellness piece like who's part of your team? That's a great question to ask yourself. And if you have no one part of your team, who do you need to invite into your wellness team? So one last question we have, especially as we think about those wellness teams, what are ways that we can begin to normalize self-care within the workplace? Any of us work on work within teams? Um, you know, we know that there are different policies in place, but I really feel like as individuals, we can begin to normalize those conversations and um, put more emphasis on self-care. Absolutely. Um, I noticed a difference in working in different working environments and folks even that I've worked with in, in different spaces that the spaces that we enter that feel most inviting um, and our, like we just feel the sense of support right away are usually the spaces that include music when we join on, when we hop on, right? Um, it's these little things that really make a difference for our wellness, just the, just the space that we're in, even if we're vir in a virtual space, right? And it, especially if we're in, in, in the office, what is the, the sounds the smells, the lighting, like all these little things make a big difference in how someone is showing up. And um, so considering that as one. The other is checking in. We ask this to each other all the time. How are you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm fine. But we might not really be. So one is when we answer that, answer that truthfully. That's something we can work on. Like, are you really okay? Maybe not. Um, I'm struggling right now, I'm figuring it out, but I'm, you know, the other is like, what, what um, check-in questions, if we have a check-in question, or we should have a check-in question, like, how are you, like, what is your internal weather today, and let everyone share, like, what they're experiencing, right, what I often hear from folks is like, well, if we ask, then if, and if someone needs support, then what, do, then what do we do then, well, then we support them, <laughs> Right, like that we take a moment to have some space for that. I get that we have work to get done, but how can we really get the work done if we're not fully well or someone in our team is really struggling? The other is um, my team at least, and again, I know every workplace is different, but my staff feel very comfortable with saying, I'm taking a mental health day today. Okay, have a good day. I'm feeling really stressed. Do you think you need some time off? Do you want to take half day? Like just, they have that time. I don't question like, you know, if it's a sick day, whatever, you, you can use that. That's your time for you. If you need extra time, you need to rearrange your schedule. 
I know everyone's workplaces are might be a bit different, but I think it's important to have flexibility. Um, that's part of taking care of one another. Um, checking in and supporting one another, like who is your work buddy that can be your accountability partner, right? We need that. And if, it, if you don't have that, um, how can you create a space where that, like, where maybe there's like a rotation also, like work buddies that are like checking in with one another. There's various ways that we can do it. Um, but I do think that oftentimes we put it to the, to the side because it's, it's extra work and time. But kind of like that saying that I see kind of circulating on social media often is um, if you don't take time for your wellness, you're gonna, you're gonna need to make time for your illness. Because if we're not well, we are gonna end up ill and that will take us out of work anyways <laughs> um, or any of the things that we want, um, want to do. So being proactive versus like intervening um, when it's already, we've already burned out too far. So I hope that's helpful. Yes, that is very helpful. Um, thank you so much for providing this information and being able to share with us some practices for taking care of ourselves um, in our communities. It's so important for us to have well healers. Um, you know, we think about, you know, we can't help others if we're not helping ourselves first. It's like a little bit like that life jacket or the, the oxygen when you're in the plane. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you again, Ahiha, for being able to provide this for us. Thank um, you. Today we have um, an evaluation that I'm going to post a link in the chat. If you could please provide us with some feedback and also ideas for future webinars as well. Um, we appreciate you all for joining us today and hope that you take some time for self-care and making that plan and also figuring out who your wellness team is going to be. Um, so that is all we have today. Again, this webinar will be posted on our YouTube page um, in the coming days. So please take a look at that and thank you all for your time. And Kurt and Monique, I don't know if you want to share some last words before we um, end today. Well, just appreciation for you all joining. The fact that you all came for this hour also means that there's a commitment to your wellness. So glad you're here. Please set an intention, even if it's just one, right? Sometimes it feels overwhelming. Like, oh, I have so much to work on. We all have stuff to work on. It's totally fine. Pick one thing that feels doable and celebrate that once you do it as well. So I'm really looking, although I don't, I probably won't know what everyone has set as their intentions in the upcoming days and weeks. I trust that it's there and um, just much appreciation and um, much love to you all as you continue the work that you're doing and, and showing up for yourselves as well as the community. And I too just wanna to say thank you to everyone for participating and also thank you to Monique for sharing all these little tidbits of information in terms of what we can do to, um, you know, just, improve our quality of life and just be happier. And I think one of the things that you hit on right in your closing remark was celebrating those small successes, however little they may be, because we don't do that often enough. And I think that the, as we begin to become more familiar with that celebration, that that'll start to resonate to the larger things. And so I think that it's those small steps that help to lead us in that right direction. So again, thank you for your wisdom and for your little, your nuggets of information. So great strategies. And I think we'll definitely incorporate some of those moving forward. So again, thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye, have a good day. Bye.